welcome to my behavioral driven development slides. I did these uh, about 18 months ago whilst I was working at uh, a bank retail transformation and I thought I'd share them with you and just talk briefly about BDD. I did a previous video a while back but it got uh, 8,000 views but I'm doing another one. Um, yeah, so before we start I'm going to do a quick game because uh, I do like to get uh, the game juice is flowing, gets the brain flowing. This one's called Two Truths and a Lie. If you are going to run this with your teams, give them a bit of forewarning, perhaps. I have run this a couple of times, and people have said stuff uh, on the fly, which they kind of said they didn't want to admit <laughs> afterwards. And it just came out in a bit of a blur. So, yeah, Two Truths and a Lie. It basically does what it says on a tin. I've worked at uh, three companies, beginning with M, that uh, all want to be for agile coaching. There's the Ministry of Justice, sorry about the uh, clown faced lion, uh, Marks and Spencer's, and Ministry of Sound. So, two truths and lie, which of these haven't I really done agile coaching at? And I'll tell you the, tell the tape at the end. So, BDD is uh, there to stop you falling into certain software development patterns. Uh, the first one of which is obviously when developers are banging away and uh, the testers have got jackal to do and just sat there with their sleeping machines and their sleepy faces and then they get completely overrun and have to work 80 hour weeks uh, just to get the project in on time whilst a deluge of bugs coming so away. Uh, you, with test driven development and behavioral driven development which is just a twist on TDD uh, you throw the testing up front so everyone's forced to talk together at the beginning and from that point onwards and you can even have uh, developers start and run more of the tests themselves. Another anti-pattern in development, software development, is uh, all that documentation getting old and crap as the project goes on and the business people going yada, 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 and the developers going beeps and clicks language. So a structured uh, syntax around plain English and a new code base as well it gets converted into, and suddenly that forces everyone to start talking in a unified language. Uh, talking about the same things in the same way and you'll be amazed how much that actually helps throughout the duration of a, a project. Another anti-pattern to uh, avoid in the development is uh, testers just crying and sweating and doing lots of manual tests and being given the 29th revision of the code at the last minute to recode and regression test. Obviously, with an automatic test suite, the regression test and the pain falls upon the servers and the computers. You let them do the hard work. You've written the tests up front. You just press play uh, and Jenkins or whatever integration suite you've got will run it. The other anti-pattern is the product owner, the business and being on one side of the wall, development team being on the other side of the wall. And uh, yeah, never the twain do meet sometimes. Uh, so mushroom management. The behavioral driven development puts the user's behaviors right at the forefront and it's the product owner and BAs will analyze the users and then pass those tidbits on, usually uh, up front in a ceremony called Three Amigos, that's uh, Spanish for friend. Uh, so there they are, they consist of the automatic tester, the uh, product owner or business analyst and the developer. And they're your basic three amigos. You can expand it to include all sorts of people. Everyone's welcome, really. But try and keep it a little bit minimal uh, just to get through the syntax. And uh, you'll have what you need to know and what you need to find out. As uh, you have a user story, that's just a promise to have a conversation, really, hopefully in a forum like Three Amigos. You'll convert that user story into a feature and uh, bump out a load of scenarios with a given when then format effectively makes you create concrete examples which uh, really bring the questions out. Uh, that gets converted into step definitions which gets converted into automation code which then tests the system under test. It gives you three great things. This is the slide we're going to spend longest on. Uh, so it gives you specifications uh, before you even start coding. It gives you automated tests that you can run during your coding process. And then it gives you documentation. It's a living, breathing documentation. If there's a change in requirements or spec or whatever you want to call it at any stage, you, know, you can change your automatic test suite and uh, your sort of 
uh, use story feature files, scenarios can be changed, and you can refer to them at any time. And you can use them as a run book. You can use with a DevOps team or even hand over to a service team if you're or working like that. So those are the three whacking great things that you do get if you put the hard work in of getting BDD up and running. You'll hear people talking about um, sort of inner circles, maybe an outer circles of testing. So you code, you create a failing test, you code to make people pass, and then you uh, clean it up and refactor. So you're building the right thing. That's your uh, outer circle uh, to make sure you build the right thing, and your inner circle is build the thing right, i.e. your engineering practices. Uh, so that your that's the the test suite you'll run at the developer level, and that's usually uh, run with the unit test. We'll get to that in a sec. So in that three amigo session, you'll have user stories and acceptance criteria being bandied around. There'll be an increase in domain learning. Uh, you'll have concrete examples coming out, and you'll have questions that should remain un answered in the session, but you might think about over the next week or two. Your acceptance tests will be around building the right thing and the unit test will be building the thing right so that's the business doing the acceptance and the uh, developers doing the unit test generally working on them and be careful to make sure you have a pyramid with loads more unit tests than GUI tests because unfortunately even though the computers are working at it the GUI tests are more expensive to run in terms of compute and unit tests are cheaper and quicker to write so that was it, and uh, back to my little game. Which of these have I worked for, and which have I have not worked for? I have never worked for Marks and Spencers. So there you go, just the ministries have got my contributions on Agile. I uh, hope BDD was uh, useful for you. That's a gateway to DevOps, really, and it's also a uh, gateway to other things, such as um, continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployment, true agility. But not necessary for prototyping or UXD or just a plaster to put on a botched offshore test strategy. I'll be back soon. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Bye.